The rectangular coordinates of each point are given. Plot the points and represent them in polar form. As you can see, there are three points that we need to consider. We know that the polar representation is not unique. I will present at least one polar representation for each one of these points. Let's start with point A. The coordinates of point A are minus 1.7 and 3. I can plot this point. Minus 1.7 and 3 would represent this point which we call A. We can represent point A in polar form if we provide with the length R and the angle theta. The choice of theta is not unique but providing with one choice of theta is enough to provide with one of the representations of point A in polar form. We can find R using the Pythagorean theorem. R becomes root minus 1.7 squared plus 3 squared which is approximately 3.45. To find theta we know that tangent of theta is y over x, which in this case is 3 over minus 1.7. If we use our calculators, we will get minus 60.5 degrees for theta. But this theta falls in the fourth quadrant and not in the second quadrant. If we add 180 degrees, we get the right angle theta as shown in the sketch. We can use our calculators to find that this is equal to 119.5 degrees. Therefore, in polar form, one of the representations of A is R and the theta that we have shown in the sketch which is 119.5 degrees. We can find many other representations of point A in polar coordinates having this representation. For example, we can add 360 to 119.5 degrees or we can subtract 360 degrees we can add twice 360 degrees or subtract twice 360 degrees and so on. Even considering all of these options we still have other ways to represent the point A in polar form and I will consider that in a separate video. Let's now look at point B. The Cartesian coordinates are minus 1.1 and minus 3.2. This point falls in the third quadrant. As you can see from the sketch. Now to in, in order to represent this point in polar form, I can provide with R, which is the length of the vector that I have shown and theta. R can be found using the Pythagorean theorem and it becomes approximately 3.38. Tangent of theta is y over x which in this case is minus 3.2 divided by minus 1.1. If we use our calculators, we get 71.0 degrees for theta. But this theta, 71.0 degrees, 
is in the first quadrant. I need to add 180 degrees in order to get the theta which is shown in the sketch which is in the second in the third quadrant. This becomes 251 degrees. Therefore, in polar form, one of the representations of A is R, which is 3.38, and theta, which is 251 degrees. Let's now look at point C. The Cartesian coordinates are 1.2 and minus 3.1. This point falls in the fourth quadrant. 1.2 and minus 3.1. If I provide with the theta that I have shown in the figure and r, which is the distance of the point C from the origin of the coordinate system, I can present the polar form of the vector. Now, r, which is the length of the vector, or the distance of point C from the origin, is found by the Pythagorean theorem to be approximately 3.32. Tangent of theta, which is y over x, is minus 3.1 divided by 1.2. If you use our calculators, we see that theta is minus 68.8 degrees. But the theta which is shown in the sketch is in the fourth quadrant and is measured from the positive x-axis. So I add 360 degrees to what I get from the calculator to get the theta which is in the sketch. It becomes approximately 291 degrees. In polar form, one of the representations of point C is R, which is 3.32 and theta, which is 291 degrees.